Hi everybody, Father Bill Holzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. Well, last week, last week I said I was going to give the homilies uh, for the weekend, and I planned to, except for the fact that what I didn't know I was, I had contracted COVID-19. Yeah. So, the next day on Friday, I was, well, fine in the morning. I gave Mass, I heard some confessions, I even went to the schools, talked to Miss Doomer, and then when I got back to the office around 11-ish, it just hit me. And I wasn't feeling good at all. And so I tested, and unfortunately, I tested COVID positive. And so I was basically quarantining myself for several days. And I was not feeling great. I got a temperature of 104.4 that Friday night. And I was started just taking regular over-the-counter medicine, which was able to bring down the, the, uh, the fever and any of the pain, I had body aches, things that it was basically a mild uh, cold and flu, except for that temperature was not exactly mild, but it didn't last long. But then Saturday, I just stayed put. Deacon Brett, thank you, Deacon Brett, for taking on uh, the preaching uh, for me because you had almost no time to get ready. <laughs> so thank you so much. And I, by the way, I posted my own homily. I felt kind of guilty. I, what am I going to do? I did this work. So you can go on my website, fatherbill.org. Uh, and there you can find my 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 homily, uh, written out anyway. Uh, but anyhow, so I stayed home on Saturday. I stayed home on Sunday. Watched everybody on the uh, video, uh, streamed Mass. And I even stayed home mo Monday as well as a good chunk of Tuesday. So on Sunday night, my fever broke. And I noticed that uh, when I was taking my over-the-counter medicine, I actually felt quite good. It, it quite helped, and I thought maybe I'm coming back on Sunday. But when it waned on Saturday night, I'm like, okay, no, I'm obviously this is the medicine is working to mask the pain and the suffering, but uh, I need to not be doing that. I need to figure out when the actual uh, fever is over. So Sunday night it did break. So Monday I stayed home and I came back late Tuesday, which is kind of the basic principles. Uh, the OHA mentioned so if you get COVID 19, to, and this is the case with any virus at this point, to um, of course stay home when you have symptoms and then when you have that fever. And when the fever breaks, you should be 24 hours clear of a fever without any kind of pain uh, medicine or medicine that's, you know, reducing that fever. And then you can come back to say work or whatever, but you need to mask up. And that's what I've been doing the last several days. So this is Thursday when I'm recording this. Again, it's a week from the very first uh, uh, time for me because uh, I was not quite perfect on Thursday. I thought it was a cold. I just kind of didn't pay attention to it. Um, so on Tuesday then I was coming back to work and I've been wearing a mask ever since so I'll be wearing a mask this weekend as well just to continue just out of an abundance of caution I didn't give out communion on uh, yesterday's or this morning's mass Thursday and tomorrow morning I'll give that to the Eucharistic ministers extraordinary ministers so they can do that and then but on regular weekends I'll probably go back to what we are used to doing I'll mask up while I'm giving communion I'll make sure my hands are washed you know everything like that so but if you're not if you're concerned I should say you can always go to the one of the lay ministers uh, Sunday Mass, there's lots of options in that regard. But anyhow, so that's that was me. I was kind of suffering through COVID-19. But you know, I I can't really complain because I I have great vivid memories of 2020 and going to the hospital on many occasions and being with people in the COVID units, going into the ER or the ICU and being in a bunny suit basically afterwards taking it all off going home changing my clothes jumping in the shower but also the people that i saw suffering much more terribly than i did obviously we all know that the the virus is uh, now mutated to the point where it's more an endemic akin like other kind of things we have to deal with and so that's why we're treating it with the same kind of processes we treat with the, any flu that we might have or cold symptoms to not just give that to everybody else, be kind and mindful of that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> for me, the, the suffering reminded me of those who are actually really suffering much worse than myself. And during that week also, I was you know thinking back on 9-11, the events back, that was the week before that. And I was thinking about how in Morocco, there's this horrible earthquake in Libya, there was horrible floods and I was going to, I just reminded myself, hey, you know, you don't, I got it easy. And I should just be, you know, chilling out here. I, don't complain. 
And you know what? I want to thank a lot, a lot of you because you sent me cards. You've sent me lots of emails. And I really appreciate that. I tried to do as best as I could to email you right back, to, you know, get on my computer right there. I wasn't uh, laid up in bed a whole lot. I was resting on a couch. I would nap a lot. But I was wanting to make sure I stayed up to date if I got an email from you. So stay in communication as best I could. I want to encourage you as well. When you are su suffering and sick, stay connected. I have kind of a privileged place in this because as a priest, lots of people who know who I am. But the question then be, how about yourself? Do you have a group of friends who would you know contact you when you're sick? I hope so because it's important. We can't always know who is doing well, who's who's not, who's who's sick. If they're not at church, sometimes we don't know that. So it's important that we have you know interconnections. But if you're well or you know somebody who hasn't been showing up to church, call them, reach out to them, say, hey, where have you been? I hope you're feeling well. Um, right now, there's lots of things, RSV is going around, cold, flu, you know, uh, coronavirus. There's lots of reasons why people may be not at church or wherever at work. Reach out to them. This is important for us to do that as, as Christians. This also then asks the question for me, so what do I do with this when I am in these moments of suffering? How do I react? And uh, I want to read to you from The Lord of the Rings. This is a, a wonderful section of The Lord of the Rings that I deeply love. And it's a conversation between Frodo, who's a hobbit, a little short little creature, with Gandalf. And there he's a big tall wizard. And then this really violent space of a war and Frodo is just lamenting about everything that's gone on. He's got this huge responsibility to take this ring and he's the smallest of this entire group that has decided that, to take care of this thing. But as a fellowship, he's the one that's going to do it, to go to Mount Doom and to destroy it into this mountain. And he says this. So this is from, again, The Lord of the Rings. I wish it had not have happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf. And so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. The time that is given us. This reminds me of the gospel this week. And we're going to hear about the, uh, one of the parables of the kingdom of God. And so sometimes I would just love to, be, to escape and just go to heaven, right? When suffering, as Frodo is kind of intimating here. I wish I wasn't born here now. I wish it was some other time. It's kind of escaping. Well, here's the deal. God has created you and me for this time in this place, not another time and not another place. And that's not in our control. This is something that God has given us as part of our calling. And we're not to just escape from it. And in fact, as we head, go headlong into the, our sufferings, there can then be resurrection. We can give and say, Lord, I dedicate this suffering for those who need help. help. May my prayers, Lord, be effective for your will. And change me, Lord, so that when I am suffering, that I will still be loving with people. Sometimes our suffering, we can be really grouchy, right? How, what kind of sufferer are you? A complainer or are you still, you know, do you keep your sense of humor? I try as best I can. And I can be grumpy though. But I try. When I had my um, kidney stone, I was in such pain at the hospital. And I did my best to try to keep my sense of humor. Boy, but that was probably one of the toughest things. That was much worse than uh, having uh, the coronavirus. What do you do when you get sick and how will you be and when you're not i want to encourage you reach out to someone this is maybe your time to say a kind word to somebody to reach out to them to give them a hand a lot of people have asked if they could go shopping for me or if there's anything else they could do ask that of people and you may get a no uh, in my case i was able to actually order things online and then head out to like Fred Meyer and just have them drop it in my car and, and come back and not have really any inter interaction with somebody while I was still, you know, in good shape. Can you help someone that's in need? Maybe again, it's just a simple phone call. Maybe it's an email. 
maybe it's sitting down with them and ask them how they're doing and ask them truly with an intent to listen to really how they're doing. Maybe when you come to Mass, you'll see somebody. Reach out to them. Say hello. Ask them how they're doing. And maybe, and maybe, why don't you pray with them? Not say, I'm going to pray for you, but actually right then and there, let's pray. Let's pray and see what they do. And you can lead it. You don't have to say, you know, anything that's, you know, the Lord of the Rings kind of wisdom. It can be just simple, Lord, just help so-and-so as they struggle with their, whatever that's going on with them. Let them know of your kindness and your patience. Let's get together. That's what we do when we come to church. We get together. And let's be Christ's hands and feet, feet for each other. Whether people are suffering or not. I'll see you this weekend. God bless. Bye-bye.